Hey there game developers, it is me Titan Hex back with yet another tutorial. This time we are going to be doing messages and timers. So the best way to do that is just to create a new event, um, trigger it up, set it however you need, whatever image you need, and just uh, we're going to be going into the message part of the event commands and then we will be after that going into the control timer. This should be a quick, nice, simple, easy tutorial, so let's hop right into it. Now, the first one in this list is show text. Show text is basically a, a command that allows you to display text in either the bottom, middle, or top of the screen. And you can put a face portrait next to it if you'd like. The text has a number of options here in the control characters, so we see a lot of different options here. We can display variables, um, so we can display a number that we save. We can show the name of an actor in case the player is able to change the name of an actor. We can show the name of a party member. That way we can maybe create a dialogue that allows us to show what party, uh, what you, who you have in your party. Uh, you can show the name of the currency, so in case you change currency later on, you don't have to change a thousand different text boxes. We can just use the name of the currency with um, the little shortcut. We can change, sorry, better be on there. So we can change the color of the text, which can be really great for um, special uh, menus well, not special menu, special messages that show names of uh, important names or items or anything like that. Um, we can change the size of text so that we can have like somebody whispering and we can really show off the whispering. We can make it look like someone's yelling. We can emphasize things, different things like that. Uh, and then we have the, um, since we you use the backslash to create the um, to to input these special commands. Uh, if you want to actually show a backslash, you need to have a way to do that, and they have that. Uh, then we can open the gold window, which means we have a little window displayed uh, near the text box that shows how much gold you currently have. And I'm gonna, by the way, I'm gonna show you some of the using the variables, um, the actor or the variables, the colors, the currency unit, and stuff like that. I'm going to show you how to make a custom shop later down the line. You'll see that later. So then we can have a wait and pause, which can be very useful for creating dramatic tension. I use those quite a bit, and I suggest you do too. Uh, we can make it so that you can show the line all at once, or that you have to wait for a button input to show the next line. Um, we can make it, sorry, another yawn, wow. Anyways, we can make it so that uh, it displays everything at once and stops displaying it all at once. Um, and then we can make it so that the text uh, doesn't wait for an input, it just goes. So you would wa usually want to put a, um, a pause, but this is a good way to create a timed event so that th uh, it shows text and then all this other stuff. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different things we can do using that, and I'm sure we'll get into more of it. And as you experiment, you might find some cool things that you can do. But it's great to have those little options. So next we have the background. Um, you can choose that it's a window, a dim window, or that it's completely transparent. Now transparent's great for like system messages, such as you have received X item or things like that. And you can also have one that's just a dim one, which uh, might be good for displaying certain things or if you have a certain thing you want to display behind the window um, but you still want the window to be seen and then we have the window which is that full color window just be be mindful of it and you should be good and then finally we have the fate well not finally but we have the face option and we can choose to attach a face and as you can see there's this black line down this way that is to show you how much the face takes up so if i begin to type and I pass that line and I have a face, then it isn't going to display all of that message. It's only gonna display up to about here. So it's good to just keep that in mind. And uh, you can go farther than that if you don't have a face, but just keep, just, you know, no, be, be, be wary of that. 
So next, uh, we can have batch entry, and batch entry is probably the final thing in this. So batch entry allows us to keep typing after this, and it's going to create a new text box. So as I do this, it will create a new text box. Um, see, this is the end of the text. And if I just go up a little more to this one, it's going to display what's going to be displayed here on these four. And as I go up a little bit more, it's going to show what's going to be displayed on these four lines. So basically, the way it works is it creates these four text boxes. And the text will then be um, displayed like this. It'll show this message down at the bottom. Then after the player... Ugh, really? More yawns. Anyways... Um, after the player has put their text, uh, has displayed, after the game has displayed the text there at the bottom, uh, and the player has put in, uh, added input, it'll display this one, and then it'll display the next one, and this one, you probably, you probably won't use text batch entry very much, so just keep that in mind. It's, it's probably not something you're going to use a lot, but it's good to have in case you need to do a very long exposition. So next we have the show choices option. Now, show choices is a lot like a conditional branch. Uh, if you haven't taken the conditional branch, I'm just going to go over this real quick. But uh, we just choose how many inputs up to six that we have in the um, the choice. And by the way, if I wanted to, I could add something like this. Maybe yes, no. Okay. Wait. And then I can have these little guys that uh, I can make sort of using labels and things like that i can kind of switch it around and make it sort of cycle through more choices so i can make it so that there is more choices than these default six i just have to get a little creative um, but for now you see that there are six choices that are allowed and there's actually a seventh one if we choose branch and that will create a cancel option so if i said a b c d e and f uh, there is now a cancel down here whereas if I didn't there wouldn't be that seventh chance option or a cancel option so the way that works is that if a player hits escape it'll just jump automatically down to the cancel option and everything inside cancel will happen but none of this stuff will happen uh, and then it'll just continue on through its processing so the cancel branch allows that but we can also just make a default um, cancel option so I can make it so that choice six F is actually cancel and I can just type end and so when the player hits escape it's going to do the end option and then it's gonna process all that um, and then that's just it's basically what the cancel option uh, is when you hit escape so next um, I could just completely disallow canceling maybe it's an option that's mandatory you have to choose and I can't cancel or escape out of it so next we have default Default is when the choice menu comes up, what choice the selector starts on. And that's pretty much it. Very simple. Then you have your basic position. It's always going to appear just above the text box or below it, depending on you know where the text box shows up. But it's going to either be left, middle, or right, below or above the text box. And then we can choose whether the window is dim, transparent, etc., just like a normal text. So any text that appears before the choice box is going to display, and then the text is going to display just up above or below it or wherever it is. Uh, it's going to display right near the text box. So just keep that in mind. Any text we can have like, would you like to go, uh, which number or which of these five letters is your favorite? And then it can show these. Um, and it's going to display that in the text box here and then give the options nearby. So just keep that in mind um, that show text and show choices sort of go together. Next, we have input number. Now input number is a it's going to display a, um, a little box somewhere in the center of the screen and it's going to allow us to input a number how many ever digits we set so I can do a four digit number and I can hit up and down to move the number or to change the number that I'm on and left and right to change uh, which number I'm on so I can change the value of the number and then I can change which number I'm on um, right there in the center 
Here, I'll actually, you know what? I'll show you. It'll be a little simpler. So let's say I create a passcode. So it's going to save into a variable. And I choose which variable this passcode is saved into. Um, and then I can use the conditional branch to check if that passcode is correct. So now I can check the passcode variable to see if it is three, four, five, six. And I can show a text that says enter the passcode. So now I will approach this woman. And after I approach her, a it'll ask me to enter the pass, uh, passcode. And if it is three, four, five, six, then whatever's inside the conditional branch will occur. So nothing is inside the conditional branch. But if it was, boom. So as you can see, I can change the number three, four, five, and six. So now I can have a special passcode in the game. So the input number would allow something like that or allow you to choose a number for any puzzles or um, debugging or anything else that you really need. Um, it's, it's sort of up to you how you use the input number, but uh, you could maybe um, do a whole bunch of different things, uh, gambling or anything like that. So next is the select item. And I'm gonna show you how select item works, but basically uh, when you start, you're going to save the item you choose inside a variable. Now, you're not actually saving the item itself into the variable. You are actually saving the number of the item you pick. So there, I don't want key item. I think I want regular items. So regular items, uh, I'll give the player some, some items too. I don't believe you start out with any. So increase potion by one. Uh, magic water by one and oh hey no I didn't want that okay so just give me a few items here magic water dispel herb and stimulant so now what's gonna happen is um, it's gonna display a window and that window is gonna be filled with the items that are in my inventory and then I can choose an item and when I choose the item the the items number is saved and so each item has a number. I'm gonna show you right now. So when you go into the items tab of the database, you can see these numbers next to the items. When you select potion, the variable that's saved is gonna be one. When you select magic water, the variable that's saved is gonna be two, three, four, five, six for all of these. So that's the, when you select the potion, that's the number that's gonna be saved. So then I can check to see if the uh, item number is one so saved item which is the variable i saved the item into is one then i know that i have a potion or that i selected a potion so they can say thank you for the potion thank you for the potion and otherwise they can say this isn't a potion this isn't a potion of course, it doesn't take the item when you select it. I would have to remove the item. Uh, so I do change items, decrease potion by one. So if the item is one, we know it's a potion and it decreases the amount of potions we have by one. So thank you for the potion and then we lose the potion. Um, so I'm gonna make her say, can I please have a potion? So what's gonna happen here, I'm gonna explain the logic. Uh, they ask if they can have a potion. The game gives us some items and then the select item menu appears and I get to choose from the items that I have in my inventory. The item is then saved into the item number is then saved into the saved item variable. And we know that potion is 0001. So if the item is one, uh, saved item equals one. We know it's a potion and then we can say thank you for the potion and remove it Otherwise, we can say that's not a potion So we're gonna go ahead and show you how it works and what the, what it looks like So this is really good for a quest where maybe you have to give a specific item or you have to figure out what item the monster needs or a player needs or, or a character needs uh, and you can also even use it to create a crafting system and I'm gonna show you guys how to make a crafting system uh, sometime later down the lines, but this is a great way to create a crafting system. 
This is also new in RPG Maker MV. This is the first time the select item has been, you know, in a game. So, or in our RPG Maker. This is the first time RPG Maker MV has introduced the, this select item option, which is great because it allows us to create a crafting system. So now I can choose the potion. Or actually, I could, how about I choose the dispel herb? They're like, this isn't a potion. But if I choose the potion, thank you for the potion. And I have just given her a potion. So simple enough. Um, that is how the input number works, uh, or select item works. Um, and it can do some cool things. Finally, we have the show scrolling text. And show scrolling text is very simple. It's going to make a uh, some text up here and just sort of scroll down or up the, the window. Uh, so now I can just have some scrolling text. I can choose the speed at which these text scrolls and I can choose whether a player can hold down enter to make or the action key in order to make it scroll faster. So I can do that. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how that works. So we're going to take a quick sample look at what show, show scrolling text does. And after that, when we're done, you know, taking a look at it and seeing how it works, we're going, by the way, this is great for exposition or quick things. Uh, it's good for just like a, narr a narrative coming by or, or somebody talking or something. Um, and here it goes. So it, it obviously it'd work pretty well for credits too. So little things like that uh, can be very helpful. It shows the text just scrolling up. Um, and of course we can, uh, it doesn't have a center option, but we can find ways to uh, center it. So uh, generally you probably won't use it that much, but it's good to have and it's, it's there. So next is, uh, and lastly, the control timer. Uh, control timer is super simple, super easy. You can either start or stop the timer. There is only ever one timer in the game, though. Uh, you can create custom timers so that you can have more than one. But the RPG Maker MV only allows one of its own kinds of timers. So we can create a timer that's, say, five minutes, and maybe you have to run or escape something, or maybe you have to collect certain uh, enough items in that time frame, or maybe it's for a mini game where you're, you're running around a uh, shooting gallery or something like that. So the timer does count down during battle. The only thing is that um, the battle, if, if the timer ends, during the battle, you have to wait until the battle ends in order for whatever the timer is supposed to do to actually work. Um, so you can't have whatever special event the timer causes at minute or at the last second um, to occur in battle unless you have something special set up for that battle. Um, I mean, you can put it, you can put, the reason for that is because if I was to have a parallel process here, that is checking for the timer being zero. And we use that here. So I could check to see if the timer is zero uh, or less. So if it is zero or less, um, then we know the timers ran out. And then I could show text, blah, blah, blah. Um, time is up. Actually, is it more time is up. So we create the timer. This timer starts counting down from five minutes. And after five minutes, uh, it says time is up. And we have it in a parallel process, so it's constantly checking to see if the time has reached zero. And now we have something running that does that. Um, the thing is, if we are in battle, we're not on this map. And this won't say time is up until you have exited the battle and re-entered into this map. And that's one of the restrictions. The only way to get around that would be to go to the database, uh, find the uh, enemy or the troop tab. Um, and find out which battles might be occurring uh, where the timer will be running and then add a, you know, timer is zero or less. If it is, then we can boot you out of the battle. So where is my battle stuff here? Abort battle. So if the timer is zero or less, the battle is aborted and you aren't able to fight anymore. 
And then that'll boot us back to here. And then whatever parallel process is here saying time is up will occur. Um, and then we can, you know, do whatever happens when the time is up. Maybe it boots us to another screen or something like that, like the Safari zone or, or things like that. So that's sort of how timer works. It's a little restrictive, um, but it does serve a decent function. And there's plenty of times you will use it, especially uh, it shows up in the top right, which is very useful. Uh, so it shows the timer counting down in the top right, and we don't have to do anything special for that. And that can be really useful. So that's sort of how the timer works. And that pretty much, uh, by the way, the only way to check to see if the timer is finished is, of course, a conditional branch. So as always, conditional branches are one of the most important things that we use in everything from game progression to um, flow control. And basically, a lot of what we use is tied to conditional branches. So I always like to emphasize the importance of a conditional branch. Um, and conditional branch checks the timer, all that happens. So there you go. Now, the important thing to remember here is that uh, there's quite a few things we can do and just let your creativity flow here and test things out. Uh, that's pretty much it for these tutorials. Um, we'll have, I'll have more tutorials coming in soon, but uh, that, that covers, this covers messages um, and you, and the timers, you should be a little bit more comfortable and have some ideas flowing um, on and ideas on how to do some of the cool things you want to. Uh, but yeah, thank you. Like, comment, subscribe. I always appreciate it. Uh, I have a Patreon account. Uh, it helps me to continue to create these tutorials. I also will be releasing resources and special packs, uh, things like that through the Patreon uh, games as well. So if you ever want to support me and maybe get access to some cool goodies like badges and things like that artwork a whole bunch of cool stuff um, even scripts uh, just make sure you you sign up to my patreon and you you subscribe to my channel um, show me your support comment like my stuff if you learn something um, let me know anything you're working on or need help with even if i can't help maybe someone else can so thank you and i will see you guys in the next tutorial Thank you.